we all come here to Madhuban. Of course, <coughs> because this is our unlimited home. And Baba says, welcome to your own home. Bab that is home. We also come here to continue with our study. And this is why <clears throat> every day during the day we have not only morning when Baba talks to us, but we also have classes and discussions or workshops or whatever in which we are able to study further whatever Baba has told us in the morning or through the morleys. And it's amazing that it's a university, it's a patshala, no? Baba calls it as patshala, the school in which we study. <coughs> and the subject that has been given for today, which is the subject of humility is something that I don't think anywhere in the world they teach humility, do they? <laughs> do they take up the subject of humility as a subject to study and to develop? <laughs> there may be of course few religious organizations or institutions that talk about, you know, some of these qualities, but literally to take it up as a subject for studying the self or to, to develop and to inculcate is something that we as Baba students do. Not just do it as part of the study, but we do it with a lot of enthusiasm that we want to imbibe all the qualities of Baba. And when we look at Baba, we know that he is the embodiment of humility. <laughs> and so one of our inspirations to study this subject or to, to be more embodiment of humility is the image of Baba himself that we have in front of us. No? We want to become Bab Saman then one of the main subjects in which we have to present ourselves as Baba's children is the subject of humility. But of course in the world outside it's not something that is even recognized as a quality, <laughs> something to be appreciated or something to be respected. Even unconsciously, you know, people who are more humble, somehow people like to be with them but not necessarily they would say, oh, I want to be like that one. <laughs> they don't see it necessarily as a strength. They would see it as a weakness, no? <laughs> or something that they will lose out or they cannot get their job done if they are so much humble with someone. So the first thing that Baba does with us is he reorients, you know, our thinking about any subject. Say, for example, we are talking about humility. Baba, first of all, tells us what exactly it is. Because if we don't understand what it is, then we will also be like others in the world that, why should I be? But sometimes, you know, Baba gives us this example in the Murlis, that you have to bow down. You know? And bow down is a sign of greatness. Baba, of course, gives many examples. But in our normal way of thinking, we say, but if we bow down to someone, then that's a sign of weakness. But Baba is saying to us that it's not literally like physically bowing down to someone, but it's literally recognizing that, that there is something very unique and spiritual and dignified about every soul, no matter where they are, how they are, what their actions are. But they all have a speciality or they all have a uniqueness. 
and so what you're bowing down is not so much to someone's weakness but you're actually bowing down to someone's greatness or to uniqueness and the way in which Baba demonstrates that to us every morning is when he comes and says what? Hmm? What does he come and say to us every morning? Hmm? Namaste, right? You know, we all hear this word in the morning every day, right? Namaste. <laughs> I know it's a very commonly used word. You know, even if you go on the flight, you know, Air India or whatever, it's a common greeting. If you go to any Indian gathering or meet Indian friends, they would usually greet each other with Namaste. And of course, they don't know exactly, if it's usually used more as a social custom. But the original meaning of the word Namaste means that I bow to the divine in you. you know, I'm bowing down or I respect that which is divine in you. Now, highest on high Baba, right? The ever pure one, the almighty one, the greatest one. And every morning he comes and says Namaste to us. You know, and now what does he say Namaste to? Hmm. He says Namaste because he's through his saying Namaste, he is actually reminding us that we are divine beings, that we are souls, that we are his children, and so therefore also embodiment. So what I'm trying to say is that Baba has a whole different way of looking and explaining any particular virtue. So whereas in the world outside it's seen as a weakness or it's seen as something that you do just externally, but Baba tells us here that, that each, within each one he explains to us you know, the very underlying principle behind any virtue. And the principle behind this virtue of humility is that Every soul, every soul is a child of God and has inherited originally qualities of God. No matter where they are, how they are, how they are acting, no matter what their part is, but each and every one, you know, has that divine beginning or that pure beginning. Now when we come to understand this, you know, it's we cannot but help start saying, you know, but who am I then in comparison to anyone else? Further than that, Baba gives us the understanding of what exactly the soul is. He's saying every morning again and again, forget yourself as a body and remember that you are a point of light. <laughs> And it's really a thing of practice that as much as we practice that I am a being of light, I am a point of light. After a while, you, you know, if sometimes you really sit and practice this. But if that's, if that's what I am, you know, a point of light, then how can I think, you know, that how can I have any ego about anything that, that there is in the soul? It's a very natural consequence of the practice that we have of I, the soul, you know, as a point of light. That automatically you feel that all the greatness is in that soul. And there's nothing that you have to show externally in order to reveal your greatness. So, in a very natural way, Baba, by explained, explaining to us you know, the, the knowledge behind the soul, the knowledge behind the part that is ingrained in the soul, the knowledge behind how we are all connected to Baba and related to Baba in the same way as children. You know, and we all have equal rights over Baba. And finally also Baba giving us the understanding of karma. Very, very deep understanding of karma. That, you know, if it's not that you, for your karmas, have to be paid back from other human beings or from your brothers and sisters. But as soon as you do good karma, 
automatically you create sanskars of that. And it's the sanskars in the soul that will actually attract the fruition of that. Sometimes, for example, <clears throat> we ask or we are waiting for recognition or we are waiting for somebody to appreciate or we are waiting to, to be shown some kind of respect, you know. If we have done a little bit extra work, you know, <laughs> you must have noticed that subtly we have this expectation that somebody will at least notice it and mention something about it. Yeah? <laughs> it very rarely happens that we say, oh, you know, of course it happens, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but oftentimes there is just this slight thought that, or somebody comes and says that, you know, say for example, you have done something extra and somebody comes by and notices that it's been done and they think that it's somebody else who has done it. And so somebody else's name is mentioned and your name is not mentioned. How do you feel? Hmm? How do you feel? <laughs> of course there are different levels of response, no? <laughs> In the beginning, you know, if we are just starting with our Brahmin life and immediately we react and say, but wait a minute, this one didn't do it, I did it. <laughs> you know, you know immediately you speak it out and then little by little as we get a little bit more refined you know, in our stage, then we notice that, no, you know, I should not react in that way or respond in that way. So, you notice it that this person is not, you know, you noticing you or, you know, but at least you have made a note of it, mental note of it, and you still get thoughts about it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't get so much hurt as you did before, but it's still the thought is there. Mm -hmm. Look, this person didn't notice me. They think that, you know, I'm not good enough or I couldn't have done that. And then, of course, as we grow deeper and deeper in knowledge, then, <clears throat> as Dadi has been saying, that even this thought, even this slightest feeling that lurks behind, you know, of someone or expecting someone to, to notice something or appreciate something that I have done, that also is a sign of, little bit of ego, mm -hmm. that I have done it and therefore I should be rewarded for that or I should be appreciated for that or I should be recognized for that. So Baba is now taking us to that very, very high stage in which Baba is saying, you become like me, you know, which means look how much Baba has done, you know, and look how he has been defamed. Baba always mentions this no, over and over, that I come, I create such a beautiful heaven, I purify the whole world for you, I make you into the masters of the world, and look how I have been defamed. They don't recognize me for what I am, what I have done, and what my true, you know, identity is. And look, yet again, you know, Baba's response, of course, mentions that this is what has happened in the cycle, but he doesn't say because they are doing this or they have defamed me or they have not, you know, given me the position that I, you know, that is owed to me. I'm not going to go next cycle. <laughs> Just imagine if you were to rea react like this or respond like this. But he is so constant, isn't it? No, he, knowing everything, right, that my children are like this and they didn't, they didn't remember who I am, they forgot me and they have put me in stones and pebbles, they have made me omnipresent, he says, no, all of this. But what is his attitude towards us? How does, how are, what are his feelings for us in spite of all that? He still comes, you know, benevolent father, he still searches for us from different corners of the world, he still brings us in front of him, makes us belong to him. And he still makes us into masters of the world once more. So this knowledge that Baba gives us and the, the example that Baba shows us in front of us, you know, literally how he acts with us or how he behaves with us, that's the best lesson, 
that we can ever have to learn about this subject I feel of humility because nowhere in the world you will get this practical demonstration hmm? <laughs> they can come they can tell you you know that you should be like this or you shouldn't be like this or you know if you do good then you will get back good or if you ba do bad it's going to hurt you it's going to cause punishment all of that you know theoretical knowledge they can give but who is going to give us practically the demonstration right so I feel we are very, very lucky, you know, because we are in this university or in this setting of learning about these beautiful divine qualities. And Baba himself is the teacher, not just coming and teaching and going away, but Baba himself becomes the, the demonstrator for us how and what it means to be humble or to be an embodiment of humility. Whereas before we used to understand that humility means that, you know, you bow down to a certain extent that others can even step on your feet and, you know, you just don't care about yourself. But Baba said today, that I mean, for us, he has mentioned very clearly that the very basis of humility is self-respect. Right? If we do not have the spiritual self-respect, the soul conscious self-respect that Baba instills in us, then no matter how much we try to be, you know, practicing humility or be humble in our interactions with others, but it will not be true humility. You can try to be that for a little bit, but it's really not a divine virtue in that respect. Yes, it's a quality, and Baba always says there are many good people in the world today that have good qualities, and you will find also many people that are perhaps even more humble than Baba's children outside, but it's still not a divine virtue, it's not a divine quality. Whereas here we are learning to inculcate divine qualities, which means that we are learning from God, you know, we are taking our understanding from God, about the soul and about the qualities of the soul. We are actually having yoga with Baba. We are having connection with Baba. We are relating to Baba and we are imbibing qualities from God, exactly God-like. Mm -hmm. Even we will all have individually special, unique qualities, but where are they coming from? As Baba reminded us recently, nobody has you know, quality on their own, but everything has come as an offering or as, as a gift from God. So we are all learning. Baba said, no, use the word Prabhu Prasad. Hmm? So even if there is humility, but we are not just saying, oh, that my personality is to be very humble. Okay, yes, that was before, you know, many of us or many people in the world have that humble personality, but that's not the humility we are talking about. We are talking about how to be humble like Baba, which means it starts from self-respect. It starts from that awareness of who I am. It starts from the awareness of the greatness of the soul, just by the mere fact that I am a soul and I belong to Baba as a child. You know, that itself gives me such a strong sense of myself and self-respect. And the higher I rise in self-respect, Baba always says, the easier it is for me to also show that respect to others. And one of the signs of showing, one of the signs of being humble is showing respect to someone else. It's not so much putting yourself down, but it's really showing respect to the other one. This is the main difference that normally people will say that, you know, you have to put yourself down, humble yourself down and then... But for us, we raise our self-respect. And as a result of that, you know, there is automatically a, a great feeling of respect for the other in front of us. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that we all are listening to Baba's praise of us every morning. Mm -hmm. So many different ways in which Baba looks at us, gives us drishti, calls us by different titles. So the more 
that respect which Baba gives, we are able to imbibe that respect within the soul and really feel that Baba is speaking to me. You know, this is who I am, that I am a world benefactor or I am a Trikal Darshi or, you know, like for example, this morning Baba must have, would have given so many or I am somebody who is very, very merciful or I am the Master Almighty. So whatever titles Baba is giving, the more we are able to imbibe those titles within our personality, the more there will be also the personality of being humble. Because we receive respect and recognition and appreciation from God. So what else do we need? You know? Everything else seems like so meaningless, you know, to be looking for any kind of recognition from anyone or appreciation from anyone. It seems almost like it's meaningless because God, the highest on high, He has looked at us and He has recognized and He is directly telling us what He thinks of us. So why should my thoughts go towards, you know, asking for respect or receiving respect for anyone. So as Baba said the other day that if there is ego then there is, you know, automatically there, is, there isn't the power to tolerate any kind of insult. So the opposite is also true that as much as there is humility within the soul, no matter who says what or doesn't say anything to us, but automatically we develop the power of tolerance. So then we don't even say, oh, how can I tolerate so much insult? But it just doesn't enter the intellect that I need any kind of special treatment from anyone. So for that though, we have to place ourselves in front of Baba again and again. You know, that direct drishti from Baba and the direct, why does Dadi say, for example, come and sit in the front every day? <laughs> You know, because I think one of the things that happens if you stay in front of Baba and listen to him is that you directly feel that Baba is talking to you. You're able to imbibe, you know, nothing is lost in the air. <laughs> I don't know if you've felt it. It may be in your mind or psychological, but it definitely rings true that the more you pay, pay attention and you imbibe Baba's words, completely deep within yourself, not just as Baba is talking to all of us, but Baba talking to me directly. The more we are able to imbibe Baba's words directly, understand it and take it to heart, mm -hmm. the more we are able to create our stage of self-respect and the more that helps us to to give respect to others and to to really take the insult or any kind of other treatment mm, that other people have. So I feel that, you know, the most important thing is Baba's personality himself, his example himself, and then the understanding and the knowledge, you know, that Baba gives of the soul. As I said, I am a tiny little spark of light. I cannot have any ego after that. <laughs> so practice of being bodiless. Is very important. As much as I practice, I, the soul, am bodiless, and Baba is with me, and I am the child of the bodiless Father. You know, that true recognition and experience of the self as the soul. And, you know, Baba says that it destroys the sins, but a lot of these sins are accumulated in the form of ego. You know, when Baba says sins, you know, what does he mean? <coughs> it's, it's in the in the form of these traits, the traits of ego, the traits of body consciousness. So the more I'm able to be in remembrance of the bodiless self, the soul, and the bodiless father, Baba is saying that's the time that those sanskars of ego are automatically burnt and you become really, really, and, and humility for us now I feel is, is not a special thing that I have to try to be, you know. But it's a natural reflection and a natural consequence of the stage of soul consciousness. You know, the more I am soul conscious and the more I am stable, not just soul conscious, just as a practice. I was soul conscious for this much time and that much time, you know, and the rest of the time, 
there was not that much attention, but really soul conscious as, as a consistent stage. Because the, consist, the more consistent we are, you know, the more these qualities will come out very naturally, will emerge very naturally from within the soul. So it's very important for us to, to keep that stage of soul consciousness. The other thing that helps very much, you know, Baba said this time, not only um, self-respect, but also giving respect and regard. Remember, Baba talked a lot about that earlier in the Murli, earlier in the season today. So when we talk about respect and when we talk about regard, <laughs> so sometimes you know, I think respect is something that we all know intellectually. We know that all the souls are, you know, pure to begin with, or we have to have good wishes for all the souls. But this subject of regard is something that I've been thinking about also, that regard has to do more with <clears throat> what the person is doing. Yeah. And many times it happens that what the person is doing doesn't necessarily, um, you know, allow you to give regard to that person. You know, sometimes it's against, maybe, you know, it's not according to your expectations or it may not be even according to to Brahmin Mariadas or, you know, to Brahmin uh, guidelines, you know, or Brahmin expectations. But still, Baba says you have to give regard. And that's where I feel that our greatest test is, you know, that what do we do when we are faced in situations or, you know, in with souls that really do not, you know, that we feel are not acting according to to Baba's expectations or Brahmin expectations. You know, what do we do at that time? And what I always remember at that time is that that there are many instances in my own Brahmin life that I would have acted like that also. Right? Especially in the beginning when I come and when I don't understand fully or when I don't have the the power completely to act according to what Baba wants me to act. There have been times when I have acted like that, but it was always Baba's mercy and it was always Baba's understanding and patience with me that has allowed me to grow, you know, over a period of time. So if I remember that, then I would start to have regard for that soul's part at that time. You know, that that soul's part at that time is what he or she is doing. So I cannot really blame, you know. But the fact that the soul is still connected to Baba, and is still listening to Baba, and is still making effort to whatever little extent, it may not be a very good effort maker, but to whatever little extent the soul is making effort, that's what, you know, um, draws the regard from others. You know, if we had totally given up, and we said, I can't do this anymore, that's different also. But mostly we see that, you know, our impatience comes with souls who are with Baba and who are not acting <laughs> according to what, what should be, you know, the normal guidelines. So that always has been the greatest test or the greatest challenge. And so I feel that, you know, this is where we have to remember that, look how many souls, you know, have been instrumental for my growth. Dadis, for example, or the seniors, or even the, the, the fellow Brahmins, whatever, but they did notice weaknesses, they did notice mistakes, but they were also very patient with me. You know, and they still made me progress. They still gave me chances. They still gave me opportunities. Even I made mistakes. But they didn't say, you're fired, right? <laughs> Baba doesn't say, you're fired. That's one thing he de he never says, right? <laughs> so we don't have that system here of firing anyone because we say that whatever little, you know, the soul can do, you know, let the soul have that opportunity to do. Huh? <laughs> right? Anybody has fired anyone so far in any center? <laughs> it doesn't happen, no? <laughs> so we don't do that. Sometimes you wish, you know, that we could do it. 
but it's not our system you know this this institution doesn't work like that it gives opportunity it gives chance it understands there is forgiveness you know and there's a lot of of course and this is why perhaps sometimes it becomes hard for us to to understand and get on with each other because we can't really say you know we don't want you here anymore or you know we but we can't you know so at least whatever little effort that soul is making maybe we can change the assignment or we can create another assignment for that soul or whatever but we can't say that you know you're not supposed to be here or you know this is it for you so i feel that that also means that we are giving space and time to that soul and that's a big sign i think it's 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 a sign of humility too in which you're saying you know i'm able to accept you as you are you know it's not me because it's not me it's baba's yagya it's baba's work it's baba's service and it's baba himself who accepts you as you are so who am i to say that i cannot accept you as you are so to to give that time and that space and that acceptance understanding i think is also a big part of humility and um you know it's even though you recognize that there is a vast difference between what your expectations were and what the soul is but you are able to accept that that's there you know it's it's okay that with time that soul will improve so to me that is called giving regard you know giving regard as and how the soul is able to play part at that time you know and to be able to accommodate the soul within baba's work or it could be even lokic situation doesn't have to be a lokic but it could be with lokic people too you know we have these tests and testing situations of people who you have to work with and you know you know that your job assignment you know you you, you expect a person to be like this you know and the person is very far from it and so what hap- what has to happen of course you know within certain you know parameters you have to of course be clear with that person that this is what the expectation is and you know of course you have to also pay attention that the job gets done you can't you know fool around with that but internally you have good feelings for that one you know you you still give regard to that person because the person is you know trying his or her best everyone is trying his or her best so to me this sense of giving regard to others no matter where they are do what they are doing and that allows the soul then to improve the performance or the behavior because you're not pressuring you know you're not that is a big limitation you know when you put an expectation and you say this is what you're supposed to do right now as you start your work then that puts pressure on you know souls and so they're not able to improve or they're not able to to expand their capacity but the more you're able to give them time and space to improve the more they will be able to improve and for me i think that's a sign of giving you know that um uh, space uh, or regard to that person at that time and i feel that that's a a sign of humility and in our interactions with humility the other thing i think also is that of course there are specialities that you know baba gives us as baba has been saying but the more we are able to to not just use the speciality for our own self but to use that speciality and share it with others so this subject of sharing is a big part of humility i think in which you're not ch- just saying that you can do it but you're also allowing others to be part of it and it's it's more or less like you're using that speciality to serve others now service we usually look at service as you know going up there and giving knowledge and you know sharing the you know giving the course or giving a lecture or whatever but sharing in this respect what i am saying is that if you have a particular speciality but to to really allow you know even the souls that you're working with even your, uh, our brothers and sisters even the family that we are with 
to allow everybody to to be um, benefiting from that speciality or that quality. So it's not only going to the souls who don't have knowledge and sharing the knowledge, but it is sharing of Baba's speciality. Say, for example, um, to, you know, it could be something very simple. Uh, it could be even something, a physical skill. You know? Say, for example, you can do something and you feel that, you know, you're very important in Baba's work. And so you kind of, you know, you over a period of time you become very egoistic about it because they can't do without you, you have to be there, you know, to do that particular assignment. But instead of that, if there is the tendency that, okay, if I can do it, but let's see if three or four others can also watch me do it, you know, and they're, when they watch it, then they also are going to learn to do it, right? I'm just giving you a very gross example, it could be something physical. And then what, what you've done is you've shared something that Baba has gifted you with, and that through that serving or through that sharing, what you're demonstrating is your readiness to to allow others also to come and take your place, you know, which is also a sign of humility, isn't it? Because humility really means that I, you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be just me, it doesn't have to be just my position, but it could be anyone in that position who can do it. But I have to open my, you know, myself and I have to create windows of opportunity for other people to be able to do it. If I say only I can do it and I keep on doing it, then I'm not, you know, mentally of course we know that the person can't do it. But I think this whole attitude of allowing others to learn and to, to share our skills and our talents or our specialities in a very natural way, I feel that's a big, big service that is needed in the Brahmin family these days. You know, as much as we need to do outside service, but we also need to do and empower other souls and other brothers and sisters within the family to be able to do it. Now that's not easy, but I think a lot of it has to do with whether we have that attitude of humility in which we are able to, we are ready to step out and say, you come, take this position and you do it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times there is a mental block, you know, as if we are going to lose the job and somebody else is going to get the job. <laughs> you know, we put it, we think in very logic way, but you know, but Baba doesn't do that with us. You know, it will only rise you to a higher level. You know, once you're able to allow somebody else to come and do what you're doing, Baba is going to find something better for you to do. He's not going to leave you without a job. <laughs> You know, so so it's our way of thinking. You know how we do things, in even in the normal run of things. You know, in our functioning at the centers or in the field of service. You know, but we have to, you know, like very subtly make certain internal changes. You know, in our attitude, in our thinking, in our in our feeling towards other Brahmin souls, or towards other brothers and sisters that are coming on board because we've had plenty of opportunities and, you know, we've had, you know, a good amount of time with Baba and so um, we have to give that opportunity to others too, no? even this morning as we were saying, we're going back so full so what do we have to do? We have to share that with others so I feel this attitude of serving automatically brings the quality of humility in the olden days um, they, not in the, not just in the olden days, but even today, the people, you know, the, some of the devotees, um, very, very good devotees, Baba's devotees, or even devotees of deities, one of the things that they feel they have to do, you know, no matter, even if it's a very rich person, even, you know, from very good family, but they will all make it a point to, to kind of give their time, like once, like an hour in the morning or, you know, sometime during the week or something, to go and sweep the temples, for example. Sweeping the temples, <laughs> you know, to keep the temple clean, make the, or else, you know, wash the pots or, you know, do something very mundane, very physical. And I feel that that's a big, big part of our, you know, growing up with this, 
quality of humility that, you know, it's not just intellectually we have to grow, but the more we engage our physical organs in Baba's service, which we call as karmana seva, which means that we are actually, and ba Dadi sometimes calls it as haddi seva. Haddi seva is like, you know, service that's kind of runs to the depth of your bones, you know? Like you're able to use every particle of your body, like every muscle of your body, every nerve of your body, in service, in Baba's service, in Baba's yagya service. So I feel that the great, the humility is something that we don't sit in our chairs and take notes, and we understand and we learn the subject of humility, but it's in our interactions, and in our way of offering ourselves to Baba, and not keeping ourselves reserved for example, saying that I can only do this, or I can only do that, or I'm not good at that. But offering yourself 100%, soul and body, to whatever it is that is needed at that time in Baba's service. Mm -hmm. Like, even sometimes we know that we can't do a good job, but still, as long as, you know, I'm here, I'm present, and this is what is needed, let me offer it, and Baba will then fill whatever is needed to make the job right. You know, so in other words, karma and seva are using physical, you know, organs in Baba's service. At least, you know, we have to keep it a point of, you know, of at least a fraction of our time should be spent in physically serving the yagya or, you know, offering ourselves in a physical way to the yagya. And this is why, um, at least, I know that in some centers they have this habit, even people who are very, very busy in the other kind of service, but they will all have a day in the kitchen, for example, you know? <laughs> even they're busy with other kinds of service, but they will still, because internally, it, there is something to doing physical service. You know, I know in Peace Village, for example, there are some who come there, you know, it's very intellectual people, and there are times they will keep aside weekends just to come and do the pots. You know, <laughs> because they say that's the time when they don't have to to think anything, and, you know, and when many of the sanskars can be burnt just because they are on the pots and they the hands are working, but the mind is remembering Baba. So one of the very good methods to kind of imbibe this quality of humility is, you know, to to, to do something very physical for Baba and, you know, to recognize that I'm just a little finger in Baba's work, you know, you feel that Baba is actually getting his work done, literally, through his fingers or through his hands. So that again is the greatness, because as I was saying in, in the path of devotion, this was one of the, the beliefs that you have to give your body in service also. Here, of course, you know, Baba does not want us to do, you know, Hatha Yoga ty type of sacrifice, but in a very natural and gentle way, uh, recognizing that Baba's work involves, you know, a lot of physical work and to know that, you know, I also can be a part of that. And this is why they say mind, body and wealth, everything. So the humility and then Baba, it was interesting that this morning Baba talked about the, how humility is not a weakness but it's actually our protection. And one of the reasons why Baba has put the mothers or the women in front, sisters in front, kanyas in front, is this particular quality of humility, you know, because that becomes like a protection. Because when someone comes already with a sense of, you know, I'm very good and I'm very, you know, uh, who are you and, you know, with that egoistic attitude, you know, and the person that's responding is also responding with ego. It's going to create a big fire, right? And we all know that in the beginning that there was a lot of reaction to to purity. There was a lot of reaction to to the principles of purity that Baba wanted us to to observe, right? And if it was not for putting the sister's energy or that energy of humility and humbleness and sweetness and patience, there would have been big, big, you know, fires. 
But we know many, many wonderful stories of how even the souls who came with very, very negative attitudes, very antagonistic, you know, um, attitudes, they all melted because of this quality of humility. And to this day, I feel that Baba's work is able to continue because of these qualities. And I'm not saying necessarily it has to be sisters, but across the board, whoever is an instrument for whatever. But if we are not able to imbibe this quality of humility, even it looks like at the moment, you know, you're losing out. But in the long run, understanding that that it's not really losing. You know, Baba says always that sometimes it looks like you're losing, but you're really winning Baba's heart. You know, many times he has said that, that bowing down or losing for you is not really losing, but you're actually conquering Baba's heart. So to always remember that whenever I'm practicing principles and practicing qualities and divine virtues, and it's not, especially not, it's not being appreciated in a gross way, but I have to bring Baba in front of me Im immediately. And I have to to remind myself that this is Baba's Srimad. I'm doing things the way Baba wants to be done. And immediately you will feel the power, you will feel the strength, and you'll feel Baba's blessings. And yesterday also I think we were remembering how when we change our mental attitude, immediately Baba is there for you, you know, it becomes like a blessing for you. So to understand, so why I'm saying is because, you know, we all want to be like Baba, but in the middle of that heated argument, sometimes it's very difficult to remember, you know, what I have to do, remember that I have to do things according to what Baba wants me to do or what will please Baba's heart. So as I was saying in the beginning, the reason why we are all learning and you know, um, inculcating these virtues. One, of course, you know, we know that it will make us perfect, but most importantly, we know that we are, you know, this is what pleases Baba. You know, this is what Baba wants. And it's out of our love for Baba that we are inculcating divine virtues. And it's because we have seen him in action, we have seen these virtues that he himself practices, you know, not just practices, but he is. And that's been my our inspiration and that's why we are on this path. You know, if we had not recognized Baba, if we just want to elevate our life, you know, oh and there are people like that. They will say, Oh, you all do very good things, you all talk about very good things, you know, and I like certain aspects and they will come and they will go. But for us who are with Baba and will be with Baba till the end, you know, our inspiration is much greater. It's not just, you know, a better way of life or better way of doing things, but we want to be like Baba. You know, we know who God is, what, you know, what He is, how He acts when He comes into the body. And we want to be exactly like Him. And we want to, to reveal Him to the world through our activities through our behavior, through our life. That is our inspiration. And so we should never forget that that is our uniqueness. And so not to, to compare it with anybody else who is also trying to be a better person. You know, because there are other groups, there are people, even amongst us there would be certain category which will just, you know, will want to be, will come here just to kind of okay, I like this virtue, I like this quality, I like this quality. But we are not doing things like that. Our main thing is that we have recognized Baba. Mm -hmm. And we have recognized also the truth that Baba has revealed to us. You know, the highest character that we had as human beings. You know, the highest divinity that we had. So we have identified with that. And that's what is our inspiration in our Brahmin life to continue, you know, with, and this is why I was, you know, even, even there will be many, many situations. In other words, you know, the faster you go, the, great, the higher you rise, the more there will be the test. You know, like this morning's blessing was, that even when others will come and try to test your weakness, you know, they'll try to f find out there must be some weakness or the other. 
especially if you're doing very good and if someone comes along and is making very good progress, fast progress, especially they're coming in the end, last so fast, no, Baba says. So, of course, there will always be a few things that they don't do right, but people can try to make a big deal of it, you know, and try to blow up the weakness. But Baba is saying that even at that time, the protection that you, you know, you have to resort to is the protection of your shield of humility. Because if you try to say, you know, to react and say, but, but you're also like this and you're also like this and, you know, this is not the way I, that's not what I meant. As soon as you start to protect yourself through other means, you know, there will be the vicious cycle. They will try to prove more and more your weakness. But Baba is saying today that, no, be very, very humble. In other words, accept yourself, accept what others have to offer, you know, even if there are corrections, even if they're not saying it in the right way, but accept it, because that's what humility is, you know. So, so nobody can really hurt you. If you're saying some, if they're saying something and you say, okay, there's no second step, you know, it, the argument doesn't go on, the discussion doesn't go on. You put an end to that, and then you say, I accept whatever is my part. But you still keep your self-respect, you know, you still know, you know who you are in front of Baba's eyes. So you don't have to be affected. So that really, truly is our shield, you know, that we have to use more and more to... And that comes from that being the embodiment of truth, you know, that as much as I have recognized the truth about myself, as much as I'm stable in that soul conscious stage of truth, I do not have to be affected by anyone's pointing out weakness. And yes, you know, understanding that it is an effort making life and I still have lots of things to learn. Dadi always says that, you know, till the end, the last breath, we will always have things to learn. You know, even Dadi. Dadi Janaki, I, I've heard her, you know, she will turn to us and say, but tell me what more I can do, tell me what I, in what I can improve. Can you imagine? <laughs> she has to ask one of us that, you know, what more she can do, or what do you notice that it could be a little bit different or it could be changed? And that really melts your heart, isn't it? You know, for someone of that caliber to come to us and say, but what do you think of this, or what do you think of this? So here you feel that, you know, our examples in front that we have, one of course is Baba, but also the dadis that he has prepared for us, their humility, you know, how they interact with each other. Even they all have their own speciality, you know, each one, Dadi Gulzar, Dadi, Dadi Janki, Dadi Ji, but how much they give uh, credit to each other. You know, Dadi Janaki is always sharing examples of their interactions amongst themselves. So understanding that, yes, we will all have their own, our own speciality or uniqueness, but the other one is not any less. You know? And so we have to recognize and we have to put that one in front always, because for us, the Maha Mantra is that the more you put the other one in the front, the more you go ahead of that one, you know. Can you understand this account, how, <laughs> you know, in a physical way, you know, it doesn't work. If you put somebody in front, then that person goes in the front. But for, for Baba, he's made us understand this very deep principle, that you allow others to go in front, and what happens to you? You go ahead of that one even. You go even further than that one. So somehow or the other, we have to get this principle right. You know, so if, because if we understand that, we will not hesitate before putting someone in the front. You know, you first, Baba always says, you first, you first. So even you're saying you first, but you, the one who is saying you first, is actually gone ahead of that person already. You know, and, and it's an amazing thing, you know, a very, very beautiful principle that Baba, t you know, tells us or, you know, uh, reminds us of that this is our um, means of self-progress. The, the more humility there is in our personality, the more our interactions are based on that self-respect and giving respect, the more we are able to progress, you know, without any labor. Om Shanti.